Good evening. I'd like to call to order the regular scheduled council meeting for Monday, March 7th, 2016. Mr. Collier. <coughs> Mayor Lowry. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lindsay. Here. Mr. Rick Lowry. Here. Mr. McLaughlin. Here. Mr. Craver. Here. All present. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, if you'd all stand, we'll have an invocation by Councilman Ethan Reynolds. <laughs> well, bow your heads, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for all your blessings. You say, with all things, give thanks. Lord, we thank you for living in such a great country and a great city, Lord. Allow us to continue to move this city forward and to continue to do what's right for the citizens. In heavenly name I pray, amen. Amen. And we'll do the pledge. We'll use the flag in the back, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And before we get moving tonight, I'd just like to ask everybody if you have a phone to put it on vibrator, to turn it down, please. We greatly appreciate that. Uh, we can get uh, action on the minutes. So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Yeah. I heard a <laughs> motion from Mr. Craybacher, correct? And a second from Mr. McIntyre. Yeah. Yes. No discussion? Kind of like this. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. Craybar. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Pass seven to zero. Thank you, sir. Uh, communications, Mr. Bridge. Yes, we do. We actually got two groups here this evening, and welcome to the uh, City of New Carlisle Council meeting. Good to see everyone. Uh, the first one up is Girl Scouts Troop 30630 about a book box at Smith Park. Uh, whoever would like to speak, uh, if you could please, well, should we have her go to the podium since she's so short? If she well, could, you she could, she could yeah. step right over here. Just come right over here. You're fine. You can walk right over here. Stand in the front. You can see everybody. Have a, they wanted you close to a microphone. Hold oh, one of these here, dear. Just try, just try to speak kind of loud, okay? My name is Paige Can we see the pictures? Can we pass those around? Yeah, if you want to just I'll tell you, take it down to one end and we'll pass it down. Could by any chance one of the parents uh, elaborate on this for us? If, and if you don't mind, I am going to ask you to go to the podium on this one. So, so we can hear you. Just give, just give your name and address and then 
Uh, just kind of go over what they're wanting to do for us. Okay, my name is Amanda Blackburn. My address is 965 Portland Avenue, New Carlisle, Ohio, 45344. I am the leader to these wonderful girls. Um, and basically what it is, is um, we are trying to get a newspaper stand from the sun. Um, what it would be, it's, you could open it and get a book and you can either leave one or you can drop it back off when you're done. Um, this way that we are thinking in the summertime, there's gonna be lots of kids in the park and they do the free lunches and things like this. And if they can't necessarily walk across the street to the library, since it is a busy street, this might be something that's easily accessible to them. Um, we're also gonna do a book drive to make sure that it stays stocked. Great. Does that help? Yeah. Uh, can I ask a question? question Mr. Mr. Craig um, where in the park are you talking about? We, it will be freestanding. Um, and we thought about moving it, like putting it over by the shelter so that it would be visible. Okay, and you're going to be responsible for the books that, that's in there? Yeah. I noticed on one of the pictures, it looked like it had tapes too or, or DVDs or something. You're not thinking about that? No, anymore. just books. Books or magazines. I've seen that happen before, but I've seen it like on streets. You know, yeah, they have one at Snyder Park. Oh, they did? Yes. Mr. Bridge, do we need to make a vote to, to act on this? I think it's a great idea to move forward with it. I really don't think it really requires a vote. I mean, I'm for it. I'm just, I mean, it, to me, it's a no-brainer. So we can tell them that you guys have our blessing to move forward yeah. with it. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt if we had firmed it, though, on your records. I, 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 feel, I don't feel it needs council approval, but if you guys want to motion to approve it, by all means, just do what you need to do. I'd like to make a motion to approve it. I'll second it. <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> Can you, <clears throat> and then do you have like the Who name of the, like, to how to donate mm -hmm. at all? Because you said like you guys were looking for donations. Um, yeah, well, you, we'll put it in the, we thought about advertising it in the paper okay. um, as part of the community section of the paper so everybody would be aware of it and they could donate it. All right, fantastic. It well, I'll be looking out for it then. <laughs> Great. Mr. McLaughlin. My, my question is, that is free totally to the people using yep. the books and getting the books and so forth. Absolutely, right? But yes. you would like donations, is that yes. correct? Yes. Thank you. Uh, my question was, would be, would be your thing about putting it over near the, the shelter area? Yes. I don't know, it sounds like you would have more experience and knowledge on this. Would it be better closer to the shelter house? I mean, I'm instantly thinking possible vandalism. I mean, I hate to think that, but I mean, you've got to be a little bit realistic. I didn't know if it would be better closer to the shelter house where this is getting rented out a lot, so it kind of has a set of eyes on it. You know what I mean? Well, the double edged sword of that is, yeah, you're right. But then, too, when Impact Buffalo does their summer, pro summer lunch program, they're actually at the shelter house. Okay. I mean, shelter over there. So Great. I think you, you, either, either place would be fine. Okay. Yeah. I have a few questions. Is it going to be secure via a chain or anything so nobody can pick it up and walk away with it? If it does get vandalized or damaged, that's it. I hate to be like the guy, but. The city won't be responsible to pay for that damage. Right. Okay. Yes. That would be fine. Um, the the box that we're thinking about using weighs about 300 pounds. Fair enough. So I don't <laughs> think they'd be able to lift it um, and take it away. Yeah. Kids pick that up. I think it's a great idea. I love it. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I, Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Mayor, I'd, I'd like to have the motion amended if we could to where it is secured because 300 pounds sounds like a lot. But I know I know a couple of kids that could pick it up and walk off with it uh, with with no problem. It probably should be either anchored or chained if there's a pole. They're going to put it up there at the shelter. They could uh, put a chain around the one of the posts or something. You know, a heavy duty chain. I prefer a chain opposed to drilling into the concrete. Well, uh, yeah, I would too. Uh, if, if we can do that, I don't want the I mean, I think that's, that's, no, that's second, fine. That Absolutely, yeah. that's not a problem. Yeah. I'll donate a chain, too, yeah. because people, if kids get on <laughs> it, <laughs> hopefully it won't tip forward. Right, right. that's true. Right. 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 Kids will crawl on it. Yeah. I know what they're doing. So, okay. do we need to? We, we need to, to, uh, need to really amend the motion. I don't, I don't think, think so. I don't think they know what they're doing. I mean, they've studied it and looked in it. As long as it, yeah, proper security. As long as it's done proper. Any other questions? Yeah, Mr. Lauer. What's the estimated total cost? Um, right now, everything is going to be donated. So I don't really have an out-of-pocket cost. 
Okay. Um, we're looking at getting the box from the Necrol or from the Springfield Sun, so that will be totally donated. Um, okay. The paint and things that we would use to paint it, we're looking for donations for that okay. also. So okay. there shouldn't be any out-of-pocket costs. Do you need books to go into it? Pardon? Do you need book per, per, books per, books purchased to go inside? We were looking for donations. Yes. Okay. We were going to hold a book drive and see if people would donate it, and that would also be um, in the article. Um, going into the paper when we get it installed. Council, <clears throat> any other questions? I have one, uh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Will the, uh, will the girls get a badge or something for doing this? Is it uh, something in their repertoire? Yes, um, that was one of the things they were supposed to touch on in there, but they forgot a little bit, but that's fine. Um, this is part of their key, uh, their, they have to earn a journey badge. Um, there are three ba uh, keys to each of these, and at the end is a lock. Um, and that lock represents, it, it is our world, change it. So this is part of their changing our world, our community. Um, we also have one more step that we wanted to bring up to you um, that was part of the change it also. We needed to bring up a maintenance issue that see if it could get fixed. All Just give us some time on this. I don't know what we have to do, but that is a huge safety concern because somebody could probably cut their leg coming down that and nobody wants to have a scratch. Ow. What, what's the issue with it, Randy? It's just cracked. It's cracked? Yeah. We've got a crack. It's probably sticking up a little bit. It's pretty probably, bad. It's probably needs yeah. a new yeah. metal slide. Is it a yeah. Yeah. plastic yeah. slide? Hard plastic? Oh, it's plastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we're not in the 50s anymore. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's plastic. All right. I'm joking. Man, it's a lot Randy, in the meantime, can you disable us so no one does get hurt on it? I'll let Mr. Kim go know tomorrow morning and see okay. what the course of recommendation is. Okay. Yeah. I think it would also be a big gap there that could just fall off. Sure. There's probably an epoxy we can get put over. That's probably as simple as that. Sand it, down. sand it down, put epoxy over all the day. It's no different than fiberglass water slide on a water park. They get scratch and they just put epoxy on, smooth it out. Let's take a good test it out, yeah. Maybe oh. make it go a little faster down. <laughs> I think, if, I think the, another way you guys could be really good after you're done with the, the, the book box, uh, maybe next year start adventure, if you could put a uh, like a cookie dispensing machine. <laughs> you would, you would, yeah, right <laughs> so, uh, does anybody else have any questions? Yeah. I do. No. I, just, uh, I just would like for her to tell me your name again. Amanda Blackburn? Amanda, okay, I didn't catch it. Thank you. Miss Annabelle. Thank you, girls. Excellent job. Thank you. Nothing we appreciate more. it. Thank you. Thank you. Say your tummy. Oh. <laughs> hey, those things are does, good. She does have you on the oh, video. 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 Okay, because it'll help maybe vandalism a little bit, because we're on Girl Scout. 
All right. Well, thank you, ladies. We appreciate you coming. Yeah, we need to vote on it. I guess uh, even though they're leaving, we can still vote on it. <laughs> you ready for the vote? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Of course. <laughs> Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Pass seven to zero. Yeah, that's really nice. Okay. Mr. Bridge. Can we continue on? Is that yes. what we're doing? Sir, you can Under continue. Still. Do you want to announce it? Do you want me to announce it? Normally how it went forward with due communications. Which, I'll let you announce it. Uh, we'll do it. Um, can you guys come to the podium, please? And we got two represent representatives for Kevin White, candidate for the United States Congress. Kyle District 8, Mr. R.C. McDonald, he's here representing the Congressional Campaign, and Mr. Eric Fine representing the con Congressional Campaign, and uh, Mr. Smith and Mr. White's uh, Homestead Feed and Supply, which is a local business here in the city of New Carlisle. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming. Thank you. Good evening. My name is R.C. McDonald, and I want to thank you for the privilege of allowing me to stand in for uh, my friend and candidate for the 8th District Congressional seat here in Ohio, Lieutenant Colonel Kevin F. White. Uh, Kevin sends his regrets in not being able to be here tonight due to uh, another commitment. Uh, Kevin was born and raised in this great Buckeye State. He's the proud father of five children, the husband of 28 years to his loving wife, Rose, and he's a distinguished military and civilian professional. Kevin's a 1987 graduate of the United States Naval Academy. He's a veteran of six wartime deployments with over 1,000 combat flight hours. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel White has the right stuff, we believe, to lead with conviction and be the common man's voice in Congress. He has a proven record of accomplishment as a naval aviator, an Air Force Command pilot, a mid-level manager for a Fortune 500 company, a union member, and currently is a professional airline pilot. He's also a small business owner right here in New Carlisle, part-time farmer and resident of New Carlisle, and the only candidate for the 8th District from Clark County. He's also a true conservative. He holds to traditional conservative values of less government and more power to the people. His platform includes a specific three-year comprehensive tax and budget plan that reduces tax rates on individuals, corporations, and cuts the rates on long-term capital gains. He believes in the protection of the unborn and holds a strong pro-life position. He has, he has a strong foreign policy that operates from a point of strength through uh, peace through strength uh, while securing the borders. He believes Obamacare should be fully repealed. Uh, he's a CCW permit holder and a lifelong member of the NRA. He's also a strong proponent of the Second Amendment. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there, there are 17 people vying for this office, and I'm sure that all of them are good people. Most stand on conservative platform of some sort. So the question is, why Kevin White over them? Uh, what separates him from the rest? Uh, several of the front runners are seasoned politicians. Uh, you know what you're going to get out of them which is what you've always gotten out of them, the same old, same old. This campaign comes down to money versus message. And the question is, can your vote be bought? And evidently, uh, several special interest groups believe that it can. They have spent in excess of $1.6 million to support uh, three of the front runners in this race. Another question comes to mind then, to whom will they be beholden when push comes to shove voters, or the special interest groups. I would suggest our district deserves better than the status quo. We deserve better results. To get better results, you have to change the paradigm. The definition of insanity, as you well know, is doing the same thing over and over again, hoping for different results. When you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten. To get different results, you have to do different things. You have to change. 
Kevin White is not just a change, but a change for good, for the better. Kevin is an outsider with keen insight and fresh ideas on how to make government work for the people, not against the people. He's a common man with uncommon qualities, an ordinary man with extraordinary gifts. He's plain spoken, not politically correct. He's direct but kind, uh, firm but fair, principled but compassionate. He's battle tested and ready for the job on day one. Um, I close with Kevin's own words, big problems require bold leadership. Kevin White has the right combination of skills to do this job better than anyone else, again, in my opinion. He's a proven leader with a well-rounded background. Now, if you like the state of your Congress, then vote for an establishment candidate. However, if on the other hand, you say enough is enough, we need change that will make a difference, then we humbly ask for your vote on Tuesday, March the 15th. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you sir. My name is Eric Fine, uh, and I am here representing Homestead Feed and Supply. Kevin asked me to come and just kind of give an overview of what we do. Uh, we are located at 1833 North Dayton Lakeview Road, which is the old, um, sorry, the old Schroyer implement building. Uh, we sell um, anything from pet food to um, horse feed to livestock feed to guinea pig feed to rat and mouse feed. So uh, we can kind of cover the whole gamut of any animal um, that you may have that you may feed. Um, other than that, I really don't have anything else. He just asked me to come and, like I said, give an overview of what we do and to introduce ourselves to the city council because we are a fairly new business here in New Carlisle. So thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Bridge. This would be the third time I've said this at a live council meeting. I feed my dog blue buffalo. It is $60 a bag if I go to Pet Supplies Plus or Petco. <coughs> Homestead Feed Supply, has, I think, has it for 35 or 40 bucks. Same weight, same everything. So definitely, definitely give them, give them a stop. He's telling Shout you you're underpriced is what he's telling you. I'm sorry? He's telling you that you're underpriced. You better <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not telling you that. I'm telling you that it's a great deal. Mr. Freibach, don't, don't ruin the all Council, any questions or comments? Before we move on, Mr. Lally. I also have been shopping there too. My wife and I feed the birds and the squirrels, and it's, it's a fantastic market. That's the only place I go anymore. Used to go to Rural King before you was here, and that's where I go now. It's Speaking of I wild birds, uh, we now are starting our own mix your own seed. Yep. Um, 75 cents a pound, which is not bad at all compared to what you would buy other places and you get to put in it what you want in it so oh, yes. they showed that to me last time i was there and yes. i've already been on a computer trying <clears throat> to figure out how to mix it <laughs> <laughs> any other questions no thank you gentlemen we appreciate your time and coming tonight thank you all righty all right okay moving on to uh, city manager's report with the bridge thank you mr mayor my spot here. <coughs> All right, there we go. Uh, action report um, Twin Creeks, um, but still ongoing. The next steps will be mail available in a timely manner. Where we're at now, because I know there's going to be a question coming up. Um, two things. One, we're waiting on a checklist from our attorney, Lynette Dinkler. As we all know, uh, Jake Jeffries has been hired to help us out with this particular project. Um, Lynette's still involved, so she wants to make sure that Jake is doing what he needs to do. And then two, also I am, will be beginning on Wednesday compiling the list of all the, um, how much money the city has paid, whether through um, legal fees, through assessments, um, throughout some time, because we have, that's one of the um, requirements to satisfy ORC 5722. We have to prove that we've put money out there to recoup money <coughs> back. Um, so again, that's where we're at between creeks. Um, I talked to the attorney representing the buyer today. Everything's still, in, uh, the buyer's still interested. I check about weekly because it's one of those things that's on my plate there. Um, we did have a resident up in Twin Creeks wanting to buy a parcel next to her house, well, their house. Um, I had spoken with the attorney. Um, the uh, potential buyer doesn't want to separate those 26 or 27 offs, unfortunately, but won't be moving forward with selling her a parcel directly. Hello, I did advise that family to get hold of um, 
the uh, attorney representing the buyer, then maybe they could work something out on the end. I just could not, in good faith, potentially derail the bulk purchase price for one person to buy a parcel of land next to their house. If, if we could have, we would have. Um, but moving on, informational items, GoFundMe pool campaign. Mr. Mayor, I cannot speak words about how much this is being a success. Um, I personally donated with it. I think a lot of council members have donated with it too. Um, I'm going to let Mr. Mayor talk about that since it's his uh, project. Thanks. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to do that. So, okay, uh, yeah, the GoFundMe for the New Carlisle Pool fundraiser. I'm going to pull my phone out here, not to be rude, just to give you an, an exact total. Uh, I just had it up just a few minutes ago talking to Sean. It's uh, setting at $2,165, and we've come up with that in 11 days from 36 individual donations. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm really shocked. I, I'm surprised that, that the communities uh, grabbed a hold of that and supported it as well as they have. I mean, it really shocked me. So, it, and I think I mentioned at the last meeting, we had a gentleman from Connecticut that moved from Nicola to Connecticut that used to work at the pool and made a donation, I think for $100. And he said that, you know, he worked there with a big part of his, you know, of his time growing up in Nicola and he supported it wholeheartedly. So, uh, moving forward, um, I think we'll be able to get the pool painted. All the buildings will be painted, get some of the panels updated on the back uh, building where the, uh, the tables and things are, get that done, get some new lighting in the bathrooms, get some new mirrors in there. I know the girls complain a lot about the mirrors, get some baby, baby changing stations possibly in there. I'm not sure about that one. But those are the main things we're gonna get taken care of with, that donat with those donations. And then I know Howie and, the, and the, all the city workers are doing an amazing job already getting the getting the lights up to date, making sure the lights in the pool are working, the sound for the speakers. So uh, one big thing is, is if anybody knows, anybody that wants a, a, a job at the pool, spending their days in the sun as a lifeguard, to uh, look into that. If you have any questions, you can call the city office and, and they'll give you all the information you need, but they will be hiring lifeguards and, and possibly concession stand workers and things of that nature. But uh, I just really want to thank anybody and everybody who's made a donation or supported the pool in the, in the community. It's, it's very important for Nicolau to, to have this, and I just want to say thank you to everybody that's helped with it. What, what was the total on that? What was that figure you threw out there? Uh, 21, 2160. 2165. Mr. Mayor, does that include the $50 check donation we got? No, we do. We got a. So that's just about 2200 then? Yes. Plus yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, and just to ex explain, when, when we end that campaign, I don't know if any of you are familiar with GoFundMe. GoFundMe obviously is a company in their own. They take a percentage and then they send the check. And I, I'll say what will happen is when they send that check, I'm just going to maybe someone or myself will present it to the city when it actually comes. But uh, that's uh, how it works. So. <clears throat> Mr. Are you looking for volunteers to help paint and so forth when that happens? That's a. Uh, We've, talk, we've touched on that. I don't know legally what we can and cannot do as far as union, you know, the union city workers and overtime and things of that nature. So I don't want to say yes. I, I mean, I think it would be great. I just don't know how far we can take that without your guidance. It, it's unfortunate. Our, our employees are unionized. Um, and I wish I could make it simple. It, it's not. It's a very complicated process. But just to give you the Reader's Digest version of it, if we take work away from them and we take away their potential overtime, that could be a possible grievance. So um, I think with something like this, since it's a community effort thing, I don't think it's going to be pretty much paid attention to that much. But we still have to make sure that everything is going to be okay, especially with the union, unionized employees. Definitely. Sure. Well, if, if that's something we can do, and I agree with you, I think people will kind of look at the whole picture here, what the community's coming. Sure. These people have donated money if they want to come and help pay. I think it's their right to come and do. Uh, within reason. So what we'll do is we'll put that out on the pool's Facebook page. So if you are interested in being a volunteer to help paint or clean up or uh, things like that, just keep an eye on the pool's page and we'll keep you up to date on that. Absolutely. Mr. Lowry. Yes, with that being said, if there is a problem, and I, you know, I'm, I'm back in 100%, and if that is a problem, uh, we can still have volunteers for working during pool hours, correct? Yeah. I don't Concession think stand? I don't things? think it, this is... This is not going to be an issue. Okay. I don't. I, yeah. But even if it is, we can still volunteer to work during. Mm -hmm. so that's what he's asking. I know a lot of people said they would donate their time to work in the concession stand. Right. And 
things like that. I don't that know would be no problem. The only problem I would see is maybe you have to sign a waiver in case you get hurt. That would definitely be a sign of waiver liability. Okay. But they, you have, they, they would have to be jobs they would normally do. Okay. Our unionized employees wouldn't work the concession stand. Okay. So you're not Good. taking, you're talking like the general repair and maintenance, you okay. know, the, the upkeep. That is something that our hourly employees would do. Okay. But again, something like this, community effort, it's the pool. I don't think it would be any issue. Thank you. Mm -hmm. the, uh, speaking on the volunteers, uh, you said they would have to sign a waiver. Is that anybody would volunteer to paint, whatnot? Yes. You would make if sure that happens? If you're volunteering your time on behalf of, for the city of New Carlisle right. on city property, you will be required to sign a waiver okay. of liability. Okay. Because sure. I was going to bring up, uh, you know, if somebody gets hurt there and they're volunteering, they're going to be covered by workman comp because they're not being compensated. Right. So I was going to mention that. Well, they're know. not on our payroll. Well, so no, but if you're signing a waiver, right. that releases the city of sure. all liability. I mean, I don't think there's a way for that to happen. I don't think there is. But no, no. they're not on our payroll, so no. I don't think that's an issue. I would just be concerned about having to pay their medical bills. <laughs> if they get hurt stop. while they're here, we would have, if they wanted to bring suit against the city, to pay their medical bills for right. them being hurt. And that's what the waiver would be in common place right. for. Go ahead, Where do you make your donation? What's that? Where do you make your donation? Uh, you, you can do it online. If you don't, if you're not one who likes to do things online on our web, on the uh, pools page, you can go to the city office and do it through the city office. If you're going, you're going to write a check, just put pool donation in the memo. Correct. 2016 pool donation. 2016, correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank and moving on, uh, you see in the, in the uh, council packet. Before we go on. Yes, sir. Ser service. Nobody's here for service. I just want to say thank you for the potholes that mm. were fixed on Main Street <coughs> and also down on 571 on the bridge. Uh, I wanted to thank Howie. He's not here tonight, but they did get on it. The one that I commented on popped back out, but they filled it again, I noticed. So mm -hmm. they're up on it. And down by what a dog, they've repaired that also. So at least Main Street, they're trying to take care Response of it. Response rates are a little faster this time around, much, aren't they? Much. Yeah. Much better. Awesome. No, Howie is, is doing a fantastic job, um, especially with getting responses back and stepped up with the pool. So, you know, um, that's that's how we get things done here. You know, let's, <laughs> let's, just, let's just get it done. Thank okay. you. If we don't have to put it off, don't put it off. Mr. Bridge, uh, two things real quick. Let me say something real quick. And you, you already mentioned it. I just want to say it again. The city guys, I, I think, don't get the recognition they, they should. I mean, you know, we're the face of the city. They're the, you know, Randy, Colleen. We're all the faces when there's a problem. It's us. You see us. Uh, when there's, things are going good, it's us usually. Um, but, you know, a big thanks to Howie, you know, all the guys on the street crew. Those guys do an amazing job of getting things ready getting things taken care of in the cemetery. So just, you know, if you happen to see those guys when they're out there cutting uh, the grass of the park on a hot day, stop by and toss them a bottle of water if you can, tell them thank you. They do, they do a really good job for the city. There um, are the ones out there knitting gritty, getting dirty, getting right. to get it done. Absolutely. Um, Mr. McIntyre had a question. Yeah, I had a question for you, Mr. Bridge. It's probably something for Mr. Kitko, really, and I should have warned you about it beforehand so you sure. could have some information. but. Um, there's a number of trees that have been cut down here in the park. Uh, just for everybody's knowledge and understanding, could you talk a little bit about why the trees were cut down and what's going to be happening to the, the tree parts? I think they were just knocked down because they were fear of falling and they were dead. So it's a thing where they were hauled out and it's, it's a safety hazard? It's a safety hazard. I do know that there are, I do believe they're coming back to, the, to clean up the remaining mess. Um, but again, the time frame for that to happen, I'm, I don't know. Sure. My head. Yeah, I know sometimes <clears throat> when those bigger trees, uh, they mm -hmm. look healthy, but the insides can be rotted or hollowed out or whatnot. Sure. Absolutely. We have a windstorm like we've, we've gotten a few years back. That can cause a lot of damage. Sure. So. Didn't, pa didn't a park down in Park Lane do a similar yeah, project yes. that we did as yeah. well? Yeah. And I will say this, is this was actually donated labor from, I think, two local companies here. So yeah. a big hats off to the Marisner Tree Service. I do Marisner, this is one of them. James Rush. And right. James Rapp, so thank you, gentlemen, because that is a huge cost that the city, quite frankly, what a hard time paying for. Yeah, that's a huge cost. And it's they're, they're going to take the, the rest of the wood. I'm assuming they can take that and sell it for, for whatever mm -hmm. they're going to do with it. Sure. Great. Yep. And did you hear what John said? I did not. Oh, no, Ash Bohr. Ash Bohr, is that in, what they're wrong with? In, in Park Lane, yeah. Oh, oh. Well, those out there, too, I think. Yeah. Since we brought that up, 
I was in the paper talking about scarfs for donating trees for down in the park in Park Lane mm -hmm. to replace the ones. Have you talked to Mr. Scarf about possibly? Mm -hmm. I have not. I have not known he was here. donating for Park Lane. <clears throat> yeah. They, they definitely are donating quite a few trees <coughs> okay. for down in the park to well, help replace. Yeah, Pete's um, donating stuff for the community garden, too. He is? <clears throat> oh, good. They, a lot of times they have ones that they have to throw away that sure. possibly would be utilized here. Yeah, absolutely. And that was scarves, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Pete, yeah. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Uh, Mr. Bridge, you may check with uh, Miami Valley uh, Gardens, too, to see if they... Uh, would be interested in donate, donating any trees or brush trees. Miami Valley, is it M Meadowview? MBG? Meadowview. 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 Okay, Meadowview. okay, I, okay, gotcha. And I, every time I see the MBG, I say Miami Valley. Yeah, I, just, I do too. I don't know why they changed it. But <laughs> That's what I thought you said. I'm like, I thought I was the only one who messed it up. No. <laughs> so you knew who I was talking about. Sure. But I mean, I, I believe they're in the city also, aren't they? No, no, they're not no, in the city either, no. so oh. neither one of them are. No. No, they're not. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm sure one of them would uh, possibly step sure. up and so donate to some trees. They're both I mean, great, they're both they're great organizations, they so we'll, we'll get some trees. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go more on that another Next. time. Moving Next. On. Moving on. <laughs> and moving on, um, I got an email from Time Warner Cable. Um, basically, they are changing, switching over from analog to all digital. So if you don't have a digital box in your house, you will no longer be able to watch TV. Uh, there is time frames associated with this. Um, now, you can get a free digital box or a digital adapter. There's a free period for those, and it ends October 22nd of 2016. However, after October 22nd of 2016, you will be paying for what you've received. So, for example, if you go now during the free period and get four boxes at the end of October, you would then pay for the four boxes you have. So, I would recommend any customer or citizen who has Time Warner to give them a call to get the specifics about your particular account. I know at our fire station we do have to upgrade because I think some of those are on analog. Um, but very important. So, definitely, if you do not have digital cable, um, you might want to call Time Warner and try to get one of these converters. But uh, again, this came through the email, so I'm, I'm almost positive we got some citizens that are going to be affected by this. So I think that we need to get the word out. Mr. Bridge. Yes. I have heard on various radio show programs that those will probably cost about three fifty dollars a piece once that goes into effect. Like a monthly billing yeah, cycle? on your bill. $3.50? Per box. Per box. That's what I've heard. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. I have a number here. Um, I'm just going to say, say it out loud for those in the audience and those on YouTube may want to get it. But it says to contact a Michael Gray at area code 513-386-5759. That's all I have for that. Mr. McIntyre. On the uh, Time Warner issue, mm -hmm. um, from what I've heard from people is that you can either you can call and they can have someone come out and install it for you or if you go there yourself, they can give it give it to you, and it's simple enough that you can go home and do it yourself. It's not sure. not difficult. So so either way will work. If you feel like having someone come out, or if you'd like to handle it yourself, it's very doable. Sure. Yeah, I've already done it. So it's really easy. Yeah. Yeah. It's a thing dial phone number, and they're walking through. If you have a box that actually works, it's easy. If you do not, well, then you need another box. There, there, there's a reputation there. Oh, any other questions from any council? Other, any other thoughts on that wonderful move on that part? It's fantastic. And there is a charge per month for that box. Well, of mm -hmm. course there is. Nothing for free. That's why they're doing it. Yeah. Good thing <laughs> Moving on, on, Mr. Bridge. Moving on. Elizabeth Township contract signed. Woo! So that's done over with. Um, we did have to change the terms on that. Um, it, it's going to be effective April 1st. Um, it's, it's, we're just changing, it's, uh, changing the time we signed it. Um, every alternative agreement are the same. I think that we're supposed to be getting about 77,000, don't quote me on the dollar amount, uh, per quarter. Um, so that's, that's one less thing that we have to worry about. Um, I have not met their new commissioner yet, but that was the delay. Um, so happy we continue on doing business with them for the next uh, three years. Absolutely. And they are thoroughly satisfied with Mr. Trustee. 
Um, I had spoken with Steve Trustee, I mean, Cap, uh, Chief Trustee, after he got back. Everything is great on their end. So again, hats off to the Chief Trustee for um, getting everything back to a suffice manner within the fire department. Definitely. Sure. And I do believe that's all I have for my city manager report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions or comments. One question on Twin Creeks. Yes. I don't know if it's a fair question or not, Randy. It's not just say it's not a fair question. You and I attended the meeting of the Homeowner Association. Yes. Have you made any decision on city vote on Homeowner Association? I will leave that up to the potential buyer, as we had discussed earlier. Okay. Because that I don't feel as though that the city, since we're going to have these in our possession for a short amount of time, I don't think that we have the right to decide on that. I think it should be up to the to uh, who is going to buy them. Okay. And being in contact with him, I know which way he wants to go. Okay. So if the vote does occur prior to him taking that, I will vote on his behalf. Okay. Yep. Good enough. But it's going to work out, I think, in everybody's favor. Good. Yep. Thank Any you. other questions for Mr. Bridge, Council? You guys are making it easy on me tonight. Come on. All right. Okay. No. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Thank Appreciate you. the sure. report. Everybody. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, let's move on to comments from members <coughs> of the public. This is your time to. Say your piece if you would like. Anyone? Please. <laughs> we know who you are, but Nancy, you could probably say it from right there just as long as you talk loud enough to pick it up on this mic. Okay. Uh, my name's Nancy with Butterbitch, and I live at 505 Kings Drive. Uh, and I had a question on um, the twin, I want to call it twin fights all the time. <laughs> um, it's strictly zoned individual residents, right? It's not going to end up apartments or anything like that. It is a, it is an R pub and that is a residential planned unit development. So in those stipulations are minimum floor requirements, um, yard requirements, or all that's regulated. You're asking to see a four unit com apartment complex, never happened. Not unless the zoning changes. I can't never say that. We wanted to grow, but now we're running into the problem of all our roads are getting beat up, and and um, <coughs> our trash service is horrible. Amen. We switched from the one that was doing me good. Now I don't know how anybody else felt, but this one's horrible. My face so. And uh, we, when we needed carpet for the library, when we let people know it. They kicked in 20000 So I think if we do a good enough knowing about Mike's plan, I think we'll get there. Absolutely. Um, Thank you. I, and the waste management answer. contract is up in August, I do believe, of this year. I'm Thank you, guys. Thank you all so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Nancy. You know, I just want to comment on the trash. I think my opinion is I love our trash. Our trash has been picked up perfectly on time every time. But I know, I think, was it you that just made a comment? Yes. Yeah, I know a couple. Um, I, I, we live on a little street, and we have about 20 trash cans there you go. Is that the problem? They're not picking it up or? Oh, yeah, oh, they're okay. It up. okay. So what I call multiple times, I'll get a new guy on the route and then we'll overlook certain things that you have to be on the route for a while to know. Um, I've heard a lot of negativity about waste management. I also heard praises for waste management. Mm -hmm. I've talked to other people in other cities and what I can stand, no matter what trash hauler you go with, they all have their issues. Yep. Yeah. You and know? that's what I was going to say. So, with either company, you're going to get peppered with good and peppered with some bad ones and, and here and there. The so. thing with waste management, I'll tell you this, is that sometimes they lack in service, but they have got the means to make it right. I'll like tell you that. You go to a restaurant and you praise mm -hmm. it and you take somebody there a week later. That's a let down. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Same scenario. I get guys all the time. I had one guy for a long time who was great. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Will you Mr. leave him any cookies or food? Yeah, I'm going to leave him some cookies. Will you leave him any cookies or food at the end of your driveway? Yeah, <laughs> 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 they left him out somewhere. I don't know he went to work for Rocky. Mr. Lindsay, <laughs> the uh, trash driver I think you're talking about, he used to do 99% of the city. He has a personal illness he's dealing with right now, and he is planning on being back around <clears throat> September, October, or August. Well, he, he's fighting cancer. He probably don't want that out there, but so you'll know. Uh, so he's doing a lot of uh, medical things there. And, but he's planning on being back, hopefully now, about September. I hope he comes back because I miss him. He's <laughs> was it a black guy? I know it was a white guy. 
Oh, the guy that I'm talking about is the white guy. He does my trash. Uh, you know, I don't even know who's doing it now because I never see him. <laughs> it's become too late. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Too dark. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Any other comments or questions from the public before we move on, please? All right. Move on. Resolutions, none tonight. We'll go on to ordinances. Mr. Collier. Ordinance 16-09, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending ordinance 1414 regarding the agreement with Miami Valley Lighting LLC for street lighting services for the use on public grounds and streets of the city of New Carlisle. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lyle. Motion to adopt ordinance 16-09. Second. Second. Bill, Bill Lindsay. <laughs> Just put Just Bill. <laughs> I heard Mr. McIntyre. Who got the second on that? Yeah. Mr. McIntyre. And just an explanation of this ordinance. Um, Miami Valley Lighting can no longer offer our 5% discount on our um, aggregation here. And it has to do with the selling and the business relationship between Miami Valley Lightning and DPNL Energy Resources being non existent at this point in time. Um, we are under a contract, so with Miami Valley Lighting. So um, once that contract does expire, we will look to uh, look to re regain our 5% discount, um, not with them, but maybe with another company. Uh, Mr. Uh, McLaughlin recently had put some information in front of me I'll be looking at. Uh, but until then, we just have to deal with it, I guess, and wait for the contract to expire. But Miami Valley Lighting overall has done a fantastic job for the city. <coughs> Council. This is a stupid question, but if we're under a contract, how can the terms of, in whatever way change? Well, they, it can change. So it I'm did. sure there's in there. They gave us enough legal notification to do so. Okay. Mr. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Bridge, uh, how much is this contract going, going to be going up with the 5%? Is it, it thousands of dollars or just a couple of 300? I don't know. No, no. no. Ms. Harris, I mean, would you You're have looking any at we're going to have to increase. Uh, anybody? We're going to have to. It's about $9,000 a year. $9,000? $9,000. Oh, $90,000. Yeah. So, so with that being said, it would be about. Has been for years. $90,000. So about $4,500. $4,500. $4,500. That we, we, we know after we change it how much it will be? Well, if we know we paid 90 a year and we get it, we lose that 5% and just do the math back. But do we know it's going back to that? Because if they're amending it, uh, you know, whatever, they're taking away whatever it, it, it situation we had and they're changing it, how do we know what they're changing it to? I mean, it seems like we're just speculating. Well, if we have a dollar amount, we know how much we pay, and we know how much we have the discount on, you should be able to work the back backwards. Like it's a $90,000 contract, and we're losing. Yeah. But it's not. Am I understanding your question? Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's kind of is my question, what, what we're going to be at now. If, we're, if we know that we are at X amount, but now that's changing. Well, a lot of this has to do, is this going to be passed on to our residents? Because it has but that's to do with still, the street yeah, lighting but, assessment. Okay. So we're going to have to readjust our, how much we assess for street lighting. <laughs> So we're going to readjust that mm -hmm. after this. Mm -hmm. Each residence is charged per foot. Well, I realize that, but right. we're going to pass on the increase to them. Well, I agree. Well, it blankly says it last line of the ordinance. I, I know, but I mean, I would like to see like the dollar amount in here so that we're locked in, you know, because I don't want them to come back and change this on us again. You know, they, are, they just changed it one time. What's stopping them? Well, where's the contract? Where's I mean, I would like to see if there, what, what, under what circumstances you've worked the contract. the contract in 1414, so you already know the terms of what is existing there, okay? We can't do anything about the 5% discount. We, there's nothing we can do. Uh, I realize that, but I would have liked to have seen the new contract that we're, that we're approving. It's the same thing. The without thing the 5 being struck out is what's being removed. Well, why was it changed is, is the question. Like, they just want to change it? Like, what Because they were sold, and the, the yeah, company that was able to offer the discount through Member of Lighting is no longer affiliated. I, I don't, no, why weren't we giving uh, uh, more of a notice on, on this? Like, in the sense of, <clears throat> here's what's happened, this is what's going on, and but why would... What, what were the stipulations for a change in the original contract? I mean, two years ago, is when we dealt with this. Like, how many, how many here remember the contract from two years ago? Okay, none of us. <laughs> All right, well, I'll be honest, none of us. <laughs> and I have a pretty good memory, but so I don't like to see that in whole. So, Mr. Mayor, 
Mr. Ramsey. If they, so, so what you're saying, what this is saying, Mr. Bridges, they sold this first a company, another company bought them or took them over, or they merged or something, correct? I don't know. I mean, I don't know the whole history with how this all went down. All I know is Miami Valley Line is no longer affiliated with DPNL Energy Resources. Okay. If it was sold or they just discontinued whatever. Okay. That I don't know. All I know is since that affiliation between Miami Valley Lighting and DPNL Energy Resources is no longer existent, the 5% discount can no longer be applied. But if they're acquiring our contract, from a say a defunct company or whatever happened, mm -hmm. I would think there would be legal standing someplace to where they'd have to honor this contract until the end of the contract. I mean, I don't think the discount came from Miami Valley Lighting. The discount came from DPNL Energy Resources. DPNL is out. We still have the contract with Miami Valley Lighting. Okay, <clears throat> if you actually read what is scratched out here, it tells you the history of what's going on here. So if you want to sit here and read it, you can. And it says the city shall be eligible for a 5% discount on a monthly full service set for the generation discount, following the condition is satisfied. The city is party to the current gener generation supply agreement with DPNL Energy Resources in Ohio. So since our affiliation with DPNL Energy Resources is no longer existent, DPNL, who took who gave us the 5% discount, is no longer affiliated with Miami Valley Lighting, who we do business with. So that's how we got to the reduction of 5%. Miami Valley was never giving us a 5% discount. It was their affiliation with DPNL Energy Resources that gave us the 5% discount. Okay. And, and also, guys, let me, in reading this, it clearly states that the discount will continue through the end of this year and will not take effect until 2017. So it will not be assessed as an increase to anybody in town until next year. And that gives us the chance to shop around. <coughs> when does this contract expire then? 2017. 2017? January 1st. contract date. It's either 27, I think it's 2018. 2018. 2018. See, that didn't work. Well, it's somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah, it just basically says that in 2017, In the council packet that I gave you guys last round when I first introduced this, the whole contract was in your packet, was in your council packet. Yeah. Mr. McLaughlin, the information that I gave you, yes, since sir. this goes through December 31st, 2016, would you be able to try and make contact with that individual? to see if there's any way that they can do anything for us with this? Saying. Yeah, I don't think the company, you, Honeywell, that you supply does street lighting yeah. assessments. They may be able to take over some like city building operations yeah. or something like that, and that's yeah. great. I don't think they can supply our lighting for us. Well, you will contact them oh, and see what, what we can possibly do. Oh, yes, yeah. okay. absolutely. That was a huge Thank savings. You. Mm -hmm. I, I was very surprised to see that check. And I was shocked. They had an article about that. 18,000 bucks. Yeah, sure. That was just from wastewater. Council, any other questions? Mr. Keller. Call for vote, please. Mr. Reynolds. No. Mr. Lindsay. No. Mr. Rick Lowser. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. I don't believe that we have a choice in this at this time, so Mr. I'm... Mr. McLaughlin, I'm sorry. I'm sorry? What, did, did you call me a different Mayor. name? Yeah. You called me Mr. Mr. Mayor? Four. Uh, I'm former. Former. I still call that. Anyway, uh, as I was saying, I don't think we have a choice at this time, so we need to go forward. But I'm hoping that Mr. Bridge will check with other people to see if there's a way we can get out of this at the end or before 2016, the end of it. Yeah. So yes. Okay. Dude, uh, I agree with Lowell. Yeah, I think we got time to shop and to look and, and to investigate. So, yeah, so yeah. Mayor Lowry. Yes, sir. Mr. McIntyre. I'm really frustrated with this. I don't like the idea that said, you know, they put the weasel words in there to get out of it. I don't like it. I'm, I'm not enjoying it. It's frustrating. Um, I want to vote no, but I'll just go ahead and say yes, but I'm not happy about it. What can I do? No, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're not going to turn the mic down. There has never been a contract. It was in the contract. Yeah. Oh, there's always an outcall. Or if certain terms of the agreement uh, change. Uh, you can put yeah. me on, Mr. Collier. That's why I was like, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's, what was the vote on that? I'm sorry. 
five to pass five to two. Ordinance 16-10, public hearing in action tonight, an ordinance to establish appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the city of New Carlisle, state of Ohio, during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2016. I'd like to make a motion for ordinance 1610. I'll second that. And an exclamation of this ordinance. This is our uh, basically yearly housekeeping ordinance. Every year, I guess we have some students. A, a city has to submit to the auditor, county auditor, a, a budget for the year. This is our annual appropriations budget uh, for cities and townships. Cities and for cities, at least, I'm not going to speak on behalf of townships and villages. The deadline to get that approved is March 31st of every year. So this right here, this the city council can, uh, is in charge of allocating how much money we have to spend. Once they approve that, it's up to the administration to spend the money to pay the bills. So basically every single year, we have this pretty much an operating budget. So if you get a, I gave you guys a packet, look over this, because this is how much money that we have set aside to spend for each of these fund accounts. Um, so again, we do this every year, and it's required by state law, okay? Mr. Mayor, if I may. We're going to ask. I was going to do it. One of us. <laughs> well, we're two, two, two things. One is this can always be adjusted. This is not set in stone. This this has to be put out every year, as you were saying. This can be adjusted. The other question I have is on the swimming pool, and I think you were going to, <clears throat> Mrs. Harris, you were going to talk to us about the swimming pool on the amount that you have on here. No. No, you were not. I didn't. No yeah, I, other than asked, what Mike right. I was asked. if you could, I was what we had talked about about the swimming pool, uh, ninety three thousand six hundred twenty three dollars. You could just elaborate on that. On um, what that represents, please. Okay. Thank you. Uh, that is the um, estimated appropriations, or basically the estimated expenditures to run that pool for this year, this calendar year. The ninety two thousand is broken down from wages. Uh, forty-seven thousand four hundred sixty dollars estimated again. Contractual, which is uh, utilities, et cetera, at twenty-five thousand one hundred sixty-three dollars. Materials. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you had just said on that twenty-five thousand. The contractual, the gas, the um, maintenance so utilities, facility, utilities. utilities. <clears throat> Thank you. It's twenty-five thousand one hundred sixty-three thousand. Under supplies, uh, basically operational supplies, chemicals being one of the main expenditures and concessions, the cost for the, uh, the food at the concessions, <coughs> excuse me, repair and maintenance supplies, that's estimated at 20500 And then there's a miscellaneous 500 That comes to $93,623. That is the estimated budget. Now, obviously we spent a lot less last year. The whole goal is to not exceed those numbers. Those numbers came from history, 2014. We actually spent $80,047. In 2013, we spent $94,440. And in 2012, we spent $91,600. So it's basically a good average amount that we could expend. And when we ask for our budget and our appropriations, we try to put in everything that we estimate we might be spending. We have normally don't even come, you know, that close to the actuals, especially like last year. But not to confuse anybody, we are only budgeting <coughs> of putting into the general fund fifty thousand okay, dollars. Okay. Is what well, correct? Correct. Okay. I just that's one of one to clear that up guys. Oh we're earmarking the other forty something. Oh, sorry. As sexual revenue from sorry. the gate and the memberships and the concessions is what we're estimating. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Lindsay. So if we budgeted 50000 for the pool, you're expecting over $43,000 at gate and concessions and other money coming in, day, day uh, passes and stuff? Estimated revenue is about 50000 and we have 50000 coming in as a transfer if needed. The expenditures are estimated at ninety-two thousand. <clears throat> so uh, that didn't answer your. No, question. no, that doesn't. That, 
I guess I don't understand where the other 43,000 is coming from. You're saying it's from the, the uh, we make yearly revenue. passes, yes. the gate passes, the daily passes, Concession. the concessions, uh, toys or whatever that is sold there. We, I just don't see forty forty six thousand dollars or forty three thousand dollars. Well, sorry. last year the pool memberships brought in thirteen thousand fifteen dollars. Okay. Seventeen thousand one hundred sixty five dollars came from gate fees from walk ins. We brought in ten thousand six hundred ninety nine dollars just in concessions, and then we had miscellaneous, and that is um, swimming lessons. Um, I think the toys, toys. you sold a, a, a few odds and ends that brought in four thousand seven hundred. <coughs> And then we transferred at the end of the season from the general fund ten thousand, and I believe our budget was forty last 40, 40, year 000. that we estimated. Same thing, we're estimating fifty thousand this year, mm -hmm. but hopefully we won't have to transfer any. But it does bring in around forty thousand the last few years as revenue of its own. You just listed over forty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. Forty-five thousand six hundred. The, the ten thousand dollars you mentioned for the concessions is that. The profit, or is that what it it sure. made, or is that subtracting what it took to buy the stuff? For the concession revenue was ten thousand six hundred ninety nine. Going over to the appropriations, looks like the last year for concessions we spent four thousand seven hundred. So we made six. So we made six thousand dollars. Yeah, concessions usually over one hundred percent profit on anything they sell. Right. Very high markup. All right. I'll I'll let somebody else ask questions. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I had one. one oh, sorry. Uh, I had one quick question. So, this, so that money it makes over the year. What we're doing is we're taking this money in the beginning, this ninety-three thousand, giving them the check, and they pay it back, right? Say, say it one more time. Uh, how do I? I'm trying to understand this better. So, we, when we pass this, if we pass this, uh, that ninety-three thousand, we write them a check. You know, not for ninety-three thousand, but for the forty thousand to start the year. Or does it pay as we? Or does it pay as we go? Pay as we go, All as right. in the so, whole. Then, is, the is there any way that we could bring that number down? Because, like Lowell said, we can change this at any time we want. It, and I would, and I think it'd be much more applicable to the people. You know, we, we said during the work sessions, well, at least what I had read in the minutes, you know, that we wanted the pool to spend no more than fifty thousand. Well, let's hold it down at that. It so, doesn't mean we will spend it. It's an. It's a, it's a possibility, so, but we can change it. Was what Lowell had said, and I mean, if that was justification point, for him, it's justification for me. It, it'll be adjusted during the year. You, we are past that game. We've had two budget work sessions. You have your council have ample opportunity to ask questions about this budget. We are now on a timeline oh, to I get agree. this certified. And I, I am. We can motion to amend it currently. When was our first budget work session? Over a month ago. So, I. But it was fifty thousand then, not ninety-three thousand. Well, the fifty thousand. <laughs> if you're putting ten thousand dollars into that forty thousand dollars, go right back into the general fund. You know, it's not like but we, we can don't have to, a, again. But this can be this can be changed during the course, and then think of it's just. Well, then we're going to do an annual reappropriation, and then we're going to. It doesn't look good when we have to reappropriate money. That's just well, shows if that we, we didn't if, budget let's accordingly say, to what, begin. We lost what five thousand last year, and it cost what the pool cost what forty forty five is what you said. And if it, it, so why not do fifty five thousand? You know, and if we if we go if we don't, if we only lose five thousand again, which I hope we lose nothing, uh, we don't have to do anything. It doesn't come out of the account unless it. And once it's spent, but it's but that has the ability to go up that high, which is why it's concerning to myself and and it might to operate you. the pool. I mean, the if pool. you look at the history, there are there is a lot of history on what the cost could be. Efforts I mean, last year made a big difference. Weather makes a difference. The amount of people. Well, it rained in. thirty days last year, so let's hope it doesn't this year. I mean, Mr. But, Reynolds, <laughs> I totally get where you're coming from. I do believe me. And if it was any kind of the pool's open. You guys voted over. I agree. It, it is over. All right. That number was different. So that fifty thousand dollars that's sent to go in there, it may only take five hundred of it. It could take ten thousand. You know, but there's no sense of readjusting that fifty thousand dollars. It can't be used for anything else but the pool. It's in the pool transfer line item. So it's either, yeah, if it goes over, if if we need to put ten thousand dollars more in there, we're going to reappropriate the money to do so. Exactly. If it doesn't, the money's not. It's not like. So you're okay it's with not like at the end of the year, the pool had transferred $20,000. Oh, I agree. But you're 000. okay with appropriating if it goes over, but not okay with the, with the reappropriate. You're okay to reappropriate the money yeah, if it's over, exactly. over $93,000, but not why 55. Why would I do more work? Well, 
you, you were just saying that you would be okay if it went over that 93, you would appropriate more money. Well, why not? I don't know what why you not deserve, but I did not say that. What I said is if it goes over the $50,000, we would have to reappropriate money. It doesn't look good when you have to reappropriate money. If it only takes $20,000 and there's 30,000 of the 50,000 left over, it's not like it automatically gets sent to the pool. I know, because it, it's, it's, it's a watch. It doesn't go anywhere. So why in the world would you sit there and appropriate $20,000 now more with the likelihood of having to go back later on and put another $20,000 in there? Well, that you're do doing double let's the do work. Let's do and then, let's do then you make yourself look like you're not planning accordingly to the state <clears> manager. <throat> and then the county. High. And then it's more work that we have to do. It's more legislation. Well, obviously, we're on disagreement on this. So. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> sure. Totally okay. fine. Calling you, Mr. Bridge. Okay, so let's just hit this one more time. I know people are probably tired. Okay, so the pool is getting budgeted for only fifty thousand dollars, correct? No. The appropriations yes. on the budget. The says. only thing we are talking about is the expenditures for the city. The revenues are in the budget that we worked on. Right. Okay. But what you're approving tonight is the expenditure part. That is our budget. It's just the expenditures. So on the expenditure side, there is ninety thousand on our budget. That's our appropriation. That's our expense budget. Our revenue, we're anticipating when we work our budget, how much of this revenue are we going to come in? So we can offset. Obviously, we have to have the money to take care of all of our appropriations. And we're anticipating right now at the um, 92,000, 50 of it being a possible transfer from the general fund. But you're only voting on the expenditures. The expenditures for the general fund, the expenditures for the water, for the sewer. Mm -hmm. But in your packet, when we work on the budget, you see where the revenues come from that pay for these expenditures. But we're only voting on the expenditures. So the 90,000 doesn't change at all. Mr. Reynolds, that is our expenditures that we're voting on today. If it brings in the whole 90000 in gate and memberships and concession, there will never be a dime spent out of the general fund. But our revenue that's in your packets to show you where that money's coming from is part of what we went over. We're approving the expenditures today, hopefully. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, if I may, I'd like to put a little levity into this. Doing. Could you write the check for $92,000, the one you're going to give, and then we'll be all set? Could you do that? He <laughs> said, sure, I've got you on record. <laughs> I'm actually out tomorrow for a funeral, but can you be at my office meeting? You can write it. Whether it's going to be good or not, you know. I can write that check. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Thank you, Dewey. Thanks, Dewey. That's right. Well, we'll try and cash out. Thanks, Dewey. Want to have a share? A little levity. That's what I Any other questions? Mr. Good, good, good laughter. That was we need some laughter. Yeah, that's right. That was nice. yeah. Mr. Lindsay, yeah. it gets intense. I, th I think the, I guess the problem or the questions I have is in the budget, we budgeted the 50000 That's what I was anticipating seeing on the appropriations, not projected income. When you do the appropriations, you only list the expenditures. There's no, there is no revenue on the budget part. This appropriation that goes to that is before you tonight. Okay. So, on our tax budget that we worked last year has the revenue side. This book that we had in our workshop shows you the revenue side. Mm -hmm. I have to get all of this to the county auditors to show them when we vote on this appropriations. I have to show them the means of where our revenue comes from. We have to be balanced. I can't have before you appropriations for you to vote on and we don't have the means of bringing the money in. That's my job. That's in this 40-some page budget that we call the whole thing. But tonight, we're voting on the part of the expenditure. I get it. That's our ordinance. Give it a try. Okay, I'm going to try to give this shot. Let me see if this works. Based on history, the cost to run the swimming pool in the city of New Carlisle cost about $93,000 based on history. Based on history, the amount we bring in from sales, from concession stands, from parties, whatever it is, is about forty-five, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. So when we talk about, hey, the pool's going to cost $50,000, we're saying based on history, how much it costs to run it and how much we bring in. Right? Yeah. And so 90, that 90, whatever it is right here, this is saying this is how much it costs to run based on <clears throat> all the stuff. But hey, we're probably not going to use that because if we look at how the pools run the last couple of years, we brought in at least half that. 
So that's why you see $90,000, and that's why we're talking $50,000. Does exactly. that make sense? Exactly. And okay. even on every fund in here, as an understanding, there is no revenue listed on this part of the ordinance. Huh? But it's uh, obviously we have revenue, and it's in our packet that we work on. This is just the expense part. Thank you. Thank you. Gotcha. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Teacher. <laughs> Any other questions? Mr. Collier, call for the vote, please. Mr. Kraybacher. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. No. Mr. Lindsay. I gotta go with no. I don't like these numbers. Mr. Rick Lowry. You don't understand the numbers. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. We have to run the city. That's what we're doing. We're giving you the okay to run the city. Yes. I just ask that, and I don't want this to come out the wrong way, but please, if, if you have any questions about the budget and how it works, please come see us. Because as council members, if you don't have a 100% knowledge of how a budget works, it's going to cause issues. And I think that this particular one is one of those things that probably could have cleared up if there was a complete understanding of how government budgets work. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Sure. Now that we've already passed that, I would just like to look at the number of the cemetery at $90,654. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean we're going to spend $90,654 on the cemetery this year. That's a projection. That's how you have to look at it. Mr. Collier, you want to move on, please? I mean, obviously, we might have to revisit it, which is obviously we not what we wanted we to do. We put the right numbers, and at workshop, yeah. we were all in agreement that those were the best numbers. They they were monitored hospital, every so month and the report when the poll opens. Well, I, I, said, I, I get I get a concern, but we're short staff. We can't turn around and reappropriate because we wanted it. In the end, all it's going to do is make the bottom line in general fund go up. They're going to take twenty thousand dollars out of the fifty we're going to put in the pool. It's just going to increase the general fund and balance by twenty thousand dollars. That's all it's going to do. It's not like miracles are going to happen, you know, so in that case, you have to, again, I don't know what government agency would sit there and put legislation through three or four times a year to reappropriate money. You give it your best shot, whatever's left over, you carry over. You've obviously never been now, to the Ohio here, House of Representatives. Well, I'm sorry? <laughs> You've obviously never been to the Ohio House of Representatives. State government, local government, not so, the same. We thing. still can revisit the issue. And I'm sure they can, okay, but we and have, sure we have to answer too. to the state of Ohio. Yeah, yeah and I'm, Ohio I'm sure we could change it. I mean, obviously we're in disagreements here, I mean, mm -hmm. and that's okay. But you mean, we could have changed it. It's, it's a done issue. We've already voted on it. I mean, I you, you have your side, it. I have my side, and that's sure. all right. 
No, I get it. Like I said, I can get. I, I see what you want, but it, it Mr. Makes Mayor, good I suggest we move on, sir. Mr. Collier. Order 16 11, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 321 16. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with New Carroll Federal Savings Bank for refinancing purposes. Moving on with other business. Under other business, there'll be a crime watch meeting uh, this Wednesday, March the 9th, at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. And the town hall meeting will be uh, Monday, March 21st, here at Smith Park Shelter House. Our council meeting will start at 6.30. Please remember, we're starting at 6.30. And the uh, town hall meeting will be directly after this at 7 p.m. Oh, I have, Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Oh, never mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. One thing. <laughs> One thing. Um, just let everyone know it's getting warmer out, and but it's not getting any lighter yet. It's not. It's not um, staying lighter longer. It's still getting dark early, but it's getting warmer out. So there's going to be a lot of kids out on the streets running back and forth through the parks. You need to watch out for them because they may not have reflective clothing on. They may be staying out later just within your, in your car. Um, watch out for them on their bikes and when they're running around. Um, so the kids are going to be outside because they've, they've been stuck indoors all winter. Just keep an eye out because uh, we don't want any incidents. And if you're a parent, please get some reflective clothing on your kids just to keep everybody safe. Uh, that's all I have. Mr. Mayor, one more, one more thing. Mr. McLaughlin. Saturday night, remember to turn your clocks ahead. Spring forward. Thank you. Within an hour. So do that. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Uh, we adjourn. Yeah.